Yeah, so I'm the, the strength and conditioning coach um, for the club. So I'm a strength and conditioning coach for the, the first team and also all the academy, you know. So I started um, in Madeira. I was living in Australia for eight years and I came home and uh, Paddy contacted me just and asked me, could I come in and give him a hand with the academy, you know. So I was doing that role for about two years. And also under that, I was working under Paul Fisher. So Paul Fisher was the first team SNC coach for the last two years. And Paul is one of the leading SNC coaches in Ireland, I'd imagine. He's the, the Donegal, you know, Gaelic SNC coach. So he was in and I was kind of under his wing for for like two years. And then Paul walk, walk, walked away last year and I was offered a full-time role. So uh, here I am and I love the I love the, the, the work that I do. And... Um, it's been great for me. For me, spend two years, for, you know, stand the, you know, stand behind Paul and see what where the players are at. This kind of just because I've got a great understanding on who needs to work on what or who, you know who needs to do who kind of thing, you know. And for the preseason has come on, the boys came in in really good uh, condition, and they're all kind of really flying at the minute and, and uh, biting at the butt, you know. Uh, before we go any further as well, the, the surname might uh, have a few memories for a few Derry fans. So uh, yes. there definitely is a connection to a, a very famous scorer in Derry City history as well. That's right. That's right. By Barry. Uh, by yeah. Uh, so uh, Barry's my dad. Um, and uh, even the players know who he has today. Like, you know, a couple of the, the local lads came to me. Dan, uh, Danny Lafferty so was saying, he sent me a photograph. My dad was like, is that their dad? And I was all hi. Jackie obviously is a, a big Derry City fan. He met me there one day and you know it's good to have that kind of history behind me because he's a bit of a, a cult hero, you know. Um so thinking about where we are, we're about a couple of weeks away from the start of the season. You guys have been in preseason for for quite a while. Yes. Maybe going right back to like the end of last season. You know, previous years you could have given the players a program or got in touch with them and says, "Look, go into your gym and you know, here's what we want to work on." In that sort of closed season, how did you have to adapt? You know, what the players were doing was there more body weight stuff? Like, how how has all that changed because they don't have access maybe to as many facilities as they did in the past? Uh, so the players are on like an app, uh, which I use. You know, so they're all on the app. So what we kind of done. Is obviously they had December off and in January they were doing like um, a fitness strength and rehab program at home. So it was all kind of body weight kind of uh, movements that they could use. And the best thing about that, they could see, you know, the exercises. So it was kind of easy to kind of follow. So what they were doing three, three times a week, they were doing like a, a fitness. So some, some runs, some body weight stuff and some uh, rehab stuff. And then, you know, that was for January. And then come February, then we kind of, up to until we got before we started, and the boys all came in and in very good condition because we do we do like a, a f- fitness test, you know, before we really start. And on average, the numbers were very, very good, you know. So it was kind of we were kind of lucky as in like we had experience for a year under it, you know, the COVID. Whenever I had kind of last year, it was like what we meant to do here, but so we were really, really prepared, and I was prepared because I knew the circumstances, you know. So. It was all kind of just body weight, rehab, and, and then they were doing their, their extensive runs, so they kind of longer runs, just to kind of ease them into pre-season, you know? So now we're heading in, like, a couple of weeks before this the first game. Obviously, there was the game against Harps last week and a game against Bray at the weekend, etc. How will the programmes change now as we head in towards the first series of games, etc.? Uh, so at the minute, so as I said, they came in the pre-season and they were all... We were very, very impressed with them, to be honest with you. They, everybody looked after themselves and they came in kind of flying. So it was easier to kind of program. You know, normally in pre season, a few boys are lacking and a few boys are fitter than ours. They all came in kind of ready to go, kind of thing, you know. So what the program is at the minute, we're in three days off a day and two days off a day, you know. So what we do is each player obviously does their, does their pitch session. And then after that, then during the the part session we do that thing called the extensive runs so they could do like uh, four minute runs we uh, minimal uh, recovery and then we kind of do mass runs as well where it's a bit more high intensity kind of interval kind of running so we kind of plan them around the sessions and then what they have then the players have got access to the, to the gym but it's only half an hour slots where they go on individually wipe everything down do the session 
that's on the app, you know, so they do a bit of strength stuff and then they roll through the catch, you know. So uh, that's what we're kind of working at, at the minute. And just we pre-season families come up at the minute. It's kind of, you know, we're just tailoring the sessions around the games really uh, right now because we're, we're, we're heading into the season. So what I've kind of been working on is just obviously with the running, the, uh, the extensive fronts and the mass runs, a bit of strength. But coming into the season, I will kind of take away the kind of the, the longer runs, uh, the, the shorter shorter runs, so the higher intensity, you know. And we'll start kind of working on power and strength, you know, just to help them to kind of perform better. So then maybe, like, let's say we're six weeks into a season um, and you know, we've, we've had a match and we have a match coming up the next Friday or Saturday. You were talking about the number of days that they have on and off at the minute. What does yeah. a normal match week look like from a player from a strength and conditioning perspective, not really from a from a pitch training perspective? Yeah, yeah. So for me, like, we do, um, just say if we play a game on a, on a Friday night, right, and then depend on travel, you know, or depend on travel or the week, previous we'll either have off the, the the Saturday or the Sunday depending on where we're at okay so that's the stage of recovery we might get a wee bit of upper body strength on them on the recovery day as well and then Monday it's, it's kind of time to work again so what we do we come on Monday it's a it's a it's a worker on the pitch after the pitch session then we've got a total body strength session and then Tuesday they're off so it's just rehab you know recover Wednesday they come in you know, and do some power training before their pitch training, and then Thursday will be good pe- preparation then for the for the game on the on the Friday. You know, so from my point of view, Monday's a worker. They recover Tuesday's very very important. You know, from my view as well, and we kind of do a wee bit of power work on the Wednesday that helps they perform better on the Friday. If you know what I mean, and then we just kind of tailor off in on the on the Thursday. So with me being an S and C coach, like my main role is the enhanced performance. Prevent injury, you know. So I'm very uh, close contact with with Declan and Mark at the minute. Just and in, 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 it kind of I'm more hands on right now with the preseason programming because we're trying to keep them fitter and, and better. You know, once the season comes in, then I don't. It's not so much a smaller role, but the the, the pitch ses- sessions are already kind of helping perform better on the pitch. I might come in and dab in some ones on a Monday, and then the strength session, the power session on Wednesday, but um. Yeah, the players kind of, player kind of, the players kind of hit to see me come. To be honest with you, you know, it's like, oh no, here comes Kevin. We have to do a warm up for for fifteen twenty minutes. Oh no, here comes Kevin. We have to do some running, you know, or here here comes Kevin for a cool down, you know. And so I get all that non related ball stuff, but the players just want to play with a ball. To be honest with you, you know, but I have to follow the protocols. They kind of help them perform on a Friday night, you know. So in, in terms of performance, like anybody that has watched football over the years, over the decades, like that warm up now, the 20 minutes before the start of the game, like that has changed a lot. It used to be, That's you right. know, lads, lads kicking a football. A like now it's a lot of like very <laughs> yes. short, sharp stuff. So like, yes. what are you as a coach trying to achieve in that to like optimize the performance for the next 90 minutes? Yeah. So like you, you follow a protocol where it's just a general warm up just to kind of get their core t- temperature up, you know, that helps uh, the muscles kind of relax a little bit and a bit of mobilization for their joints. So for, their, you know, for especially for football, for their ankle joints, they're helping the body, their thoracic spine, their shoulder kind of girdles, you know. So we're just kind of listing that up. And then after that kind of protocol is activation where we're activating the primary muscles that they're going to be using come, you know, pitch, you know, whenever they start to play. So, it's a process of just ramping them up, you know, it's a general and the activation there, you know, we're just they're, they ramp them up and start getting them to some power stuff or jumping, landing, turning, twisting, and then they'll be sprinting right uh, right at the end of the uh, warm up. So they're gonna be they'll be blowing heavy in and then they go off in and then they start doing their passing jobs and some uh, games before they go on and get ready for, for kickoff, you know, and then a new thing that I've done this year is whenever they come back out then they play, they'll do another little short kind of sprints. You get them to kind of, you know, before kickoff, it's because they go back in again for like 10 minutes, put their tip on, team talk, come back out, and they're just to they play again. So I like to do a wee bit of a, a burst before they start playing again, you know. So. Switching gears slightly, so you talked about your work for the academy, and there's quite a lot of those players have either stepped up the likes of the Ronan Voices, etc., and there's quite a number of them in around training with the team at the minute, the Brenton Bars and the Caleb McLaughlin's and those guys. 
what type of work do you have to do with them in terms of like development to get them, you know, building out strength to really compete in senior football as well? Is, is there any type of special work has to be done there? Unfortunately, it's really down to genetics. You know, I can I only play a, a small role, and it's to be honest with you, it's genetics. You know, and it's a massive jump from the nineteens to the first team. You know, I would like a wee twenty ones on there or something or or twenty threes because you have a very good nineteen year old and just might not be ready yet for the first team. You know, so they need that wee bit. But unfortunately, as you say, running boys has see if you see the change in running in the last year. It's absolutely phenomenal, you know. It's he's an absolute animal. The man you want, you want to see him running, even his performances on the pitches, he's probably be top three best in pre season this year. He's been unbelievable, you know. The, but it's time, you know. What I mean? So, I've got a lot of the boys I came in two years ago for under 15s, but then 15s and under 17s, and you, you want to see the difference in them, you know. It's just being consistent with them, you know. What I mean, and doing the right training, whereas, and um, like. It's a protocol that you have to follow, you know what I mean? So the 14s and the, the 15s might start off at body, uh, body weight and then you just slowly but surely make sure their technique's okay and they're doing the right exercise is going to be beneficial to them playing on a, on a weekend, you know? And then by week by week, you know, month by month, year by year, you'll see uh, development in their body and also just having that grind in the gym, which is a lot of them don't get. They all just want to play football. But uh, I, I, I noticed a lot of the academy boys when they first came on the door, they're like, "Oh, sick! Have they left? You know, have they do some squats? Have they do some lunges or whatever?" But you can see now, like over the years, over a couple of years, now they all they, they really really love it. You know, they love coming in. Does it change them? What they, what they do in the gym is some foam rolling, some um, mobility stuff, and they love some weights kind of thing, depending on you know if they played or not at the weekend. You know, so. The academy does on Monday and Wednesday. So on Monday we do a recovery and a bit of an upper body session. And then on Wednesday we have power and strength for the, for the game to the weekend. But it's amazing for me to see. I see the academy as my, as my wee baby kind of thing, you know what I mean? It's just great seeing them all come through. Like a couple of times I'd be driving through the eye and uh, one of them catch me eye, they'll, they'll be on a bike or jogging or something. And they just, they look, you know, you don't recognise them. Like, gee, what the size I have now, you know what I mean? And that's not so much down to myself, but I've got a small role to play in that. It's just the uh, genetics, and that's what I really have to hammer home to the kids. Is they're all different, they're all different sizes, you know, and they're, they're all mature at different stages. It's just them realising that and know that the time will come, you know. So one of the things, particularly in the last season in European leagues, when they were trying to compress all these fixtures together, like there was a lot of concern over soft tissue injuries and how you manage players and those type of things. Yeah. Thankfully, with our league, we have a bit more time. And, you know, it, there's maybe front-loaded slightly. There's a few more fixtures in the first half than the second. But when you're working with Declan or Michael or anybody else around that, like, are there specific checkpoints that you guys would look at through the season and say, look, we need to check in again on maybe players coming back or managing players to get as much out of them through the season. Hundred percent, yeah. So, like, as I said, my my warm up was as consistent of twenty minutes, and the players don't really like doing it, but it's a it's a must. And um, the proof is in the pudding, kind of thing. Where we've had little to none soft no soft tissue damage injuries at the minute, you know. So we've been doing all the right things at the minute, but. See the 4G pitch seller, it doesn't help, you know, playing that every day, it's tough for players, a lot of tight calves and tight Achilles and things like that, you know what I mean? So, as long as we follow the programme and stick to it, that's kind of um, the main thing. Where last year was, we were in and out, didn't know if we could do this, didn't know if we could do that, you know, it was, it was just a whole, whole hand, to be honest with you. But now we've kind of, the players have got their, they do like a, the COVID app in the morning, they, they do their wellness app and they also do like a, a run up protocol at home before they come to the brand well. So they're expected to do their phone roll and a little bit of mobility. They've all got a, a rehab plan each where they can log in and say, right, this is what I need to kind of work on daily. As long as they keep to that, that's, that's, that's the best that we can do, you know, in you know, a proper warm up. And as long as, you know, they all wear GPSs now, so they can track, you know, and see levels on. Who needs, you know, some hard running? Who needs to slow down? Who needs to be pulled out? You know, who needs to do more? Kind of thing, you know. So, with science 
the science behind it as well. You know, Shimas, the, the the GPS, he kind of keeps track of it all, and I, and I and I follow him as well. We we're side by side, and we kind of see everything that's going to happen, and you know. Yeah, that was actually going to be that role of the GPS, you know, when there's more and more science and more and more metrics that can be tracked, etc. So when you're looking at, you know, that, is it around the kilometers that they're doing in the game? Is it the, you know, what, like, VO2 zone that they're looking at? Like, what are the metrics that you particularly would, would pay attention to when you're trying to track that? There are a few. So what they do is they, they, they do um, a 1,400 metre time try, right? And what we're looking for is metres per second stride. Okay, so that gives us a good base on, you know, where they're at. And then what we can look at, and then we, we look at things like hard running, distance running, you know, uh, sprints completed, you know. Um, we're looking at just heart rate. We're, we're looking at uh, recovery rate, you know, how... You, how fast is their heart getting back to normal kind of thing? So we've got about four or five things where we can look at. And then we've got like a system where on the app we, we can see if they're on the on the red or on the green, you know, and we want them kind of keeping that little um, sweet spot, you know, where we want them kind of in the middle where they're not kind of overexerting themselves or they're not kind of under. But at the minute we're always trying to push the L, uh, envelope a little bit where we're kind of working them, working them, working them, but knowing that we've got games and stuff coming up, we kind of back off slightly. But then the more we can push them right now through pre-season, it's going to benefit us through the season, if you know what I mean. So we want to kind of keep them kind of working, working, working. Obviously safely, you know, but we just follow GPS. It's, a, it's an amazing tool. You can run past me now, Kevin. I can tell you what speed you'd be on that, do you know what I mean? And you can stop running. You could do a four minute run on one though there and then like you know, um Kane Horgan, his heart rate's come down really, really well. Do you know what I mean? We can tell who's getting fitter, you know, and who's getting better, you know. But as I said, they all came in phenomenal condition and um it's it's made my life a lot, a lot easier, you know, that everybody's came in ready to go and they're a great atmosphere this year and everybody's kinda of digging in and everybody's working hard and then run the well they're a wee bit, but not too much uh, patching is happening, you know. I get it all. Oh, gosh, are we doing this again today? Or what kind of runs are we doing today? That's all I hear, you know. But um, no, it's been brilliant. And the, the, the GPS is excellent um, equipment. And we've kind of upped it th- this year as well. We've kind of got a brand new kind of system in where it's a lot more high tech, you know, and it's, um, it's worked wonders for us. Perfect. Uh, 